And you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 radio show on 92 kills.com. All right, y'all, we back. It's Catch 22 radio show. I go by the name of Tay. We got Drew. We got Brian in the building. Uh, we got another special guest. Drew, what was that? That was my sound effects for our special guest. I okay. like it. I think you should do it for all guests. All guests? All guests. Or is it special for? Just for him. Okay. I got uh, some other sound effects for other people. All right, let's run it back with that with that, uh, effect. Let's, let's go. do it. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Tay. Go. We, today we got a special guest. Today we got a special guest in the building. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. My name is Jamie Mato. What's good? We're Catch 22 Radio. Let's get into it. Yeah. 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 See how I flew? I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, tell so the people. Go ahead, Tay. What's sorry. going on with you, man? Not it's been much. a minute since we seen you. We saw you perform at the uh, event that we hosted. That's right. That's you right. You did your thing. You did yeah. your thing. So tell everybody who you are, where you from. Oh, my name is Jerry Milo. Um, I'm that is not your name. <laughs> hey. Look, because look, when we met you at the festival, <laughs> we introduced Juan some Carlos. We Juan, Juan Carlos. Carlos. What was the name of that designer? Yeah, Carlos Castillo, and he jumped on the on the thing. So I was like, "That's Carlos Castillo." And, and they said, like, no, "No, no, no, oh. it's okay." <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Go I'm ahead. Jamie Milo, a.k.a. Carlos Castillo. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> what happened? How did you end up grabbing the mic that day? I don't know. I was waiting for my turn, and I think I saw you or the DJ, and he's like, oh, here's the mic. I was like, all right, but it's my turn. And I, I, was, I wasn't even paying attention. I don't know. I was like, I'm waiting for my turn. Like, I want to turn up right now. And I was like, let's just get into it. And I was like, all right. And then I was, now you're telling me about this. Carlos Castillo, I'm like, wait, no wonder... I saw people confused. Yeah. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and then the sad part is, I know your name, fam. <laughs> and I ain't stopped nothing. <laughs> I ain't <got> nothing. <laughs> Maybe that's his rapper name. <laughs> so how long have you been into music? Uh, a couple months. I've been into it since February. I mean, I, I stepped into the booth last year in October. Okay. Uh, but uh, when I truly got into it, February. I was like, that's when I decided to release my first single, which is Vivid. And then I dropped another one for my birthday to kind of make myself feel special in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, on February 21st, which, which was Birdie Bands, and kind of took off from there. Okay. okay. So what made you want to, like, finally do music, like, after all this time? Um, I've always been wanting to do music since I was little. Like, that was my number one thing, whether it was, like, getting into, like, uh, like in the school, like television, little broadcast show, for like the lunchtime and stuff, or or doing choir and things like that. And I knew I had to be doing something where like I could be myself in, mm-hmm. and also do something that I'm really talented at, which is music. So throughout my uh, years being under my mom's roof, like I wasn't able to make the music that I wanted just because mm-hmm. she was very religious and stuff like that. So I just kind of had to obey and, and go by what she was saying. But once I got out and experienced college and things like that. And started hearing mainstream music or just music in general and different type of genres. I was like, this is what I want to do. And when I stepped into, inside the inside the booth, I was like, this is it. Okay. You never thought about doing gospel rap? Uh, every once in a while. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Like, I actually like like hearing some couple artists and stuff like that. My sister sends me a lot of them when she finds up like on Spotify or YouTube and things like that. She's like, here, don't hear do this that. guy. And, don't do it. And, no, why? No, why no, 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 don't do it. Don't, I'm going to stick to my... I'm, stick to my yeah, see, yeah, see, I'm just saying because like on, on Christian rap or conscious rap, there's a cap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a ceiling that, yeah. that a lot of them hit that... I mean, truth be told, there's more ignorant people in the world than there are like religious people. So, yeah, that's true. Well, he can flip-flop back and forth because Snoop Dogg became a, uh, a Christian rapper. <laughs> when he became Snoop Lion? Yeah, he just dropped a new song. Nah, don't do that. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That was not a good idea. <laughs> so who are some of the artists that you listen to that, that kind of like inspires you to do music? Uh, for sure, uh, Drake, for sure. Tory Lanez. Um, let's see, I would say Joyner Lucas. Um, Eminem for sure as well, uh, just because of his lyricism. Um, and I would say Kanye. Kanye, man. Why Ye? Like crazy Ye or uh, yeah, like early Ye? I mean, a little bit of both. Because uh, uh, before, man, he started out with like, like with Niggas in Paris and stuff like that. And, and other songs like, um, 
Well, especially with when he dropped the song with Kid Cudi, like the album with Kid Cudi, uh, that's in Kid Seagulls. Yeah, um, that kind of inspired me too, cause it's kind of like an album where like you can kind of just get away from like your problems, whether you're dealing with certain things, whether it's like drug addiction or depression, things like that. I feel music can speak in many ways, so whatever you're feeling or you're going through, you know, let music speak for itself, and you can kind of get in tune with that. Uh, and also his spiritual craziness, like yeah, I mean. People think uh, think think like about him like man this guy crazy and stuff like that but honestly it's just he he's very spiritual he's thinking about deep inside like what we can do better for the community and stuff there's some things I don't support but as far as what he's trying to innovate and the ideas he's got I like that mm. we need him to innovate music mm-hmm. music right. like, just continue to, I think the the, the 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 bridges or the gaps that he's trying to cover um, is 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 cool. But I, I think we love him for music. Right. You know, so like the fashion, the how he gets like up in arms about fashion and them not letting him in. Um, you, you already have a staple over here. Yeah. I think what what he what he's trying to get you with like the Gucci and the Versace, like you already have that over yeah. here. Like right. your shoes are coveted more than anybody else's shoes. Why that's do you true. have to be mm-hmm. in their realm? You get what right. I'm saying? So that's just how you feel about it. Yeah. Okay. So being a his, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have, I want to know, like being Hispanic in the rap game. Do you think it's gonna be harder for you to blow? Actually, I've been getting a lot of love though. Like at first, I, I mean, it's, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like it is a little bit difficult. I feel for everyone in general, just because like it's what people are feeling at that time. Or like if you make the right moves and stuff with your music, like eventually it's gonna you're gonna get a buzz, right? But um, it is a little bit difficult just because I am Hispanic. And like some people might get offended when I use the N word, some people might not. But I mean, I was already kind of like raised a little bit like that. So I mean, it's not like I'm gonna change my whole flow because of a certain industry. Like I'm just gonna be myself, keep doing what I'm doing, keep making good music, um, and just try to see what I can do and build an impact and build a legacy. So are you ready to deal with like the repercussions that might come with you using that word? Because right. yeah, it's some people that's gonna be cool with it, but then yeah. there's gonna be some people that might press you on it. Yeah. Like, are you ready to deal with those type of like backlashes? So that's a very good question because actually I was just talking to my best friend last night about that. Um, because when I first started, like on October, and I was making music, I was so fresh. I didn't even know what it was going to take. I didn't even know uh, how much studio time was going to cost. I didn't know none of that. And then I started getting more smarter. Like, I don't want to work as hard. I want to I want to work smarter. Right. So, you know, with, these, with the industry being so big and 360 deals and joint venture deals and things like that, you know, I want to open up a lot of opportunities, but at the same time, being a good leverage, being a good advantage. So by the time my time comes, you know, I'm able to be very open-minded and aware about things and who people I, I, I can trust and people who I can talk to and see who can give me good advice, right? But I feel like at this stage, I'm ready for what is going on the next level. Now, I don't think anybody's ready for this type of, like, fast pace. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I just go to the flow. Okay. So. okay. so when we listen to your music, what can we hear from? Um, I got cool. I, I got different type of vibes, but okay. um, I like the whole get me in the club type of scene mm-hmm. I like making music like that but also I do got some music that you can relate and kind of get to know a little bit more about me mm-hmm. but that's going to be on my EP I'm okay. um, still deciding on the name of it because I do want it to, ma- to mean a lot to me so okay. I don't want to just give it a random name what's Carlos the name of it? Um, right now I don't have a name for the EP <laughs> Carlos but Castillo. I mean honestly I was thinking Troublemaker that's the choice because I was what you say is Castillo you said Carlos Castillo Carlos Castillo <laughs> The story of a designer. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. Like this <laughs> Call it the story of a designer. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, so you say you don't have a name for you know you want to drop it though. Uh, I'm thinking like like ends of September, beginning of October. Sure, just because I already got three singles out, um, and I'm probably gonna release a single soon, just so I can introduce the EP. But okay. right now I'm just kind of concentrating myself, getting to learn more about myself. Because when I came to Houston, like. It's a whole different, it's a whole different vibe, different energy. Mm-hmm. Where I'm from, where I'm from is just a bunch of Hispanics and stuff like that, and, and like it's all uh, Spanish Latin trap at the clubs and things like that. And where you I from? Wanna, uh, I'm from the Rio Grande Valley. I'm from McCannon. Shout out 956. But uh, yeah, oh, what's good, G? <laughs> oh, y'all just said something. Oh, whole that he got a Hispanic brother. Oh yeah, huh? he oh, yeah. He Hispanic too. Yeah, but over there is like a lot of Hispanic and stuff, and it's cool and all. But I mean, I feel like I'm more of a metropolitan boy. Like, like I need to be in the city. And I, I come over here and you see Porsche, you see Bentleys, you see Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Over there, like, everybody's just showing out with a Camaro. Like, bro, that ain't nothing. But, like, I, I get inspired over here, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, 
I'm seeing all these cars, I'm seeing that the city got money and a lot of opportunities to buy for artists or in general, if you want to be an entrepreneur or whatever you want to be, I think Houston's a good place. It's just about meeting the right people, you know, making right. the right moves. That's true. Right. So we're going to listen to some of those songs. Thrax, you got it queued up? No, you know, I don't think he had it clean. Oh, yeah, it clean. You <laughs> got nothing yeah. clean. Oh, I thought Thrax was going to do it. <laughs> uh, oh, live. Yeah, no, nah, I don't think he's still <laughs> That's can't do it live. Oh, okay. So he got to bring it back to us. Maybe we can we can yeah. put it on next week. Definitely. So what we'll do, we'll go into a mix of DJ Anthrax when we come back. We're gonna have him up with Mallow. Carlos Castillo. This can't switch the radio show. Yeah, Drew. Uh, uh, okay. Whose song is this? Yeah. I don't know. But I like to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, killing that. I like your version better, fam. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I little winged it. Before we, before we go into anything, Ray, I want to hear myself. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't hear myself. <laughs> all day long. Let me see. No, we still can't hear myself. Ladybug so. sucks Fresh at this job, button. y'all. Another I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladybug is the worst at this job. Yeah, back there looking like an educated mechanic. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's not your start. It's, it's your ultimate. I ran the clothesline from the front to the back. You ran a quick right turn, you hang it up. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your turbo gas is leaking. Your tur- I ain't got oh no turbo. God. Well, you do not, ma'am. That thing wicked, boy. <laughs> All right, Jay, we were talking We were talking a little bit on break about the music scene in Houston. What were you saying? Like, you feel like it's a big city, but it's actually a small music scene? Yeah, because, like, I mean, y'all know, especially if you, you guys were born here, like, Houston is, like, the third or fourth largest city in the U.S., but it's like, when I entered this game, like, music, like, I was like, damn, it's bigger than me, and it is bigger than me, but, like, the community here, when it comes to music, like, it's so small. Like, everybody knows everybody here, whether it's a producer to an artist to an A&R to somebody that can either help you, like, in the long run. Like, it's about, like, who you know, not what you know, but, but yeah, I was like, I thought it was so big here and stuff like that, but it's, like, as big as it is, it is a small circle, you know? That's true. So do you listen to, like, Pitbull and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I used to. I mean, I used to. But like, I didn't know how big Pitbull was. No, Pitbull was very big. Pitbull is huge. I didn't know that. Like after you know, he made like the Lil John songs. I was like, ah, he just fell off. And then I realized like he's still touring like worldwide. I was like, I didn't even know he was that big. (laughs) I like Pitbull. That's why I be saying sometimes like the rap scene ain't where it is because Flo Rida did the same thing. Right. So Flo Rida came out with Birthday Cake at first. That was his first single. It was hard, gangster. Bet, probably one of the best songs. All of a sudden, the Apple Bottom Jeans, that song came out. I was like, bro, who is this? And what is this? And why is he doing this? But now he's doing nothing but international music. So really, yeah. the money is there. Yeah, right. international. Yeah. For so sure, have you thought sure. about doing international music? Definitely. And that's because you brought it up. Because like, I can speak Spanish too, right? And mm-hmm. like, right, I was bro, like, you, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Like, I need to start like uh, having more options to play around with different like beats and stuff like that. And then... I don't know right now. I mean, there's some artists that are popping. I definitely want to work with Jay Cortez. He's uh, He was like a, not like a ghostwriter, but he wrote some songs for like, I Like It Like That, which is with Cardi mm-hmm. B and Bad Bunny and a couple other songs. But he got back, he got into the scene with his album named Famous. And after that, like, I just knew like this kid got talent. And he's like, he has 400,000 followers on Instagram. He's going internationally, going to tours and things like that. And I was like, you know what? Like, there's a big population when it comes to Latin America and and I can get in that. Right. In that you don't have to have a lot of talent. Oscar De La Hoya went platinum. <laughs> I got a whole singing You're talking about Oscar De La Hoya. I'm talking fight. about, what's her name for love of hip hop? Stevie Girlfriend. Oh, Jocelyn. Jocelyn Hernandez, trash. <laughs> <laughs> she has a big thing. She said, like, you know what? With that check, girl, saying no. <laughs> <laughs> no, anytime Oscar De La Hoya can go platinum. It, it's a market. I feel it's like it's, a, it's more of an open scene. Like I don't understand it's, why more people over? don't go that way. Yeah. Cause Bad Bunny is killing right now. He bro. is. He's killing. Like, Who's that? Somebody dude, is killing. Ain't he on? I like it. Yeah. The one he had the super long verse in the middle. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't listen to it. Okay. Yeah. But, so, are you thinking that you're going to go? Because really, to be honest, I think that would be an easier scene to get into, and actually, it'll be a lot 
easier to get other artists to jump on something like that because it's different. Yeah, it's oh, different. Yeah. Artists that speak in Spanish. And bro. it's hot right now, it's honestly. Hot, for it sure. is. It is. No, it I, is hot. I go to the three outside. Stuff like that, and it's always like they always turn it up. They always mix it around. They put trap or they put like uh, Latin trap, and they put some like other Mexican vibes and stuff like that or Hispanic vibes, and I like that. Like I think I'm gonna go that route. Right now, I'm just focusing on making like English music, trap music, or not even trap music. Like I wanna, I wanna do R&B music, pop, hip hop. I wanna be very like uh, versatile. So. As long as I can do that, that opens a lot of opportunities for me. I don't just want to stick to one genre. Well, let me tell so you. So you want to be like the Hispanic Nelly? Because <laughs> he did everything. No, he did, he did everything. He did country. He did country. country. Yeah, he, did everything. he did pop. Everything. He did everything. I, I bet then, and he uh, got a fashion. And nobody outsold him more than Eminem. But Eminem. But Eminem. Yeah. That's what I was gonna tell you, fam. Like it was this little black kid, right? Came out with a country song. Something different. <laughs> All I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell you is that, like, that lane but might he like be. He likes penises. <laughs> you don't want to like penises. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we didn't know he liked penises at first, fam. Like nobody knew that at first. You can tell he liked penises. Oh, Got the horses in the back. Yay. <laughs> the back of what? <laughs> that butt. <laughs> That's what he calls me. Don't call them BBCs. He calls them horses. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that, fam. So you don't have no filter. I, but None of I just, look, that didn't make y'all think about that after no. that. No. <laughs> uh, no, we just came. <laughs> I thought it was worthy. I'm just saying, don't go that route just because you want to sell a record. Don't just say, like, you like penis. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You think that that's really what it was about? <laughs> I think he was already gay. No, he was already he gay. He was already gay. He was. Because he, he was like he was a newsstand. He, yeah. he, he was a Barbie. He put a Barbie song. He put in the end. I, I don't, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not throwing shit or anything. I just don't hear them. Not because it's gay or anything. I just, I feel like, I feel like he was a one-hit wonder because it's such a big song now. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if it's an industry plan or something. But no, he got another hit. Thrax be playing it all the time. Playing it all the time. The what? Oh, oh yeah, true. I mean, so this month, I don't think he'll never have another song as big as, as, as that. Motown yeah, Road, okay, right? Yeah, um, that's like you know Trinidad James trying to make all gold again. It's never gonna be okay. like another song as big as that one. Let me ask you a question. So you saying you rather not have that big single like that? Like that single. Has made him so much money. Yeah, it has made him a broken lot of money. records. And then the longevity. So you say I would rather take the longevity over doing it than to have that one big single. I mean, there's two yes. sides of it though, because with the longevity, you get to really know yourself and you get to put out and kind of like trial and error. But with that big song, like everybody's just gonna know you for that type of stuff. So you can't play around anymore with different type of genres. And I think maybe he can because. People didn't take him seriously, like as a black, uh, as a black male in the country, they, they took him out of like the billboards for country billboards and just left them off in the hip hop, you know, top 100. But once Billy Cyrus like popped in into into the song, like oh now it's country billboard and stuff like that. So for me personally, I don't feel like even if I have a big song, I don't want them to just know me for that big song because I want to be as consistent as possible. I want to keep putting out music, more content, keep doing things with different artists and seeing where it takes me, you know, even if it takes me a little bit of time, at least I know I work my ass off for that. So if I told you right now. What what Jay-Z talked about the white hot space. Like he said, like some artists get comfortable with that white hot space and you're on fire. But he said like, that's only for for a short term. You know what I mean? And he's like, a lot of them end up broke. So like you can have a big song and it makes you millions of dollars. Cause Old Gold made Trinidad millions of dollars. For sure. But like, would you go to a a Trinidad James show right now? No. No, because you only gonna listen to that one song. I would. You only gonna hear that one song. <laughs> it might be hot though. That, that he gonna play that one song on repeat Uh-oh. all the time. Yeah, it's gonna be that's rock fine. He gonna to, to all go Pop for the bottle, I'm sweat. Woo! <laughs> See, look, that's what's gonna happen the whole time. You just gonna be woo, woo, woo. It's gonna sound like Rick Flair. Seventy different verses. I'm so going with that perm. About that. So, because this is this bring back to what you said, Drew. So if Jay, if I give you fifteen million dollars right now and tell you you can't rap another day in your life, would you take that fifteen million? Man, that's a good question, man. Because that's kind of contradicting I, what y'all are saying. Hey, hey, what's no, the you wouldn't do music. What's the catch, though? Hey, it ain't no I catch. Can't, I'm can't giving rap. you 15 million, and you got to leave music alone. All nah. music, not just rapping. No, nah, I wouldn't take it because music for me is like a, a very big part of my life. Um, and I think I can make a lot more than $15 million. I'm pretty confident. Not because I'm 
cocky or anything like that. I'm just pretty confident because if I put my mind to it, like I know I can get it accomplished. I'm gonna take it around with it. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Give me 15 minutes. They can leave this mic alone. <laughs> you ain't making uh, that but, song. But I respect. Lil I won't even listen to radio. Like, I, I respect his hustle because I, <laughs> I read that he was like negative five dollars and twenty seven cents on his Wells Fargo account, and like he was just putting out memes and stuff like that. Right now, that's 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 what's hitting. Social media, you know, everything technology is so open now. You can be a, you can become rich by just literally laying down in your bed or like sitting down wherever and make money off of your phone, bro. Like that's this how is it true. is. Before that's how I'm you to had do to go and phone. send out mixtapes, yeah. like, hey, here's this, here's that, or, just, or or make off of actual unit sales at the store and stuff. And now it's so easy, but. With this industry being more of like people just pay 9.99 on Apple Music and stuff, like the streams like are less value now, and you gotta be making more money off of shows and things like that. Like it's a it's a it's like a one and one type of basis, but I feel like it's a now, catch 22. But now like I think if I just keep doing the right things and memes or not even memes, but I just gotta find my own style. You know what I mean? I mean I feel people right now, especially back home, like. I, uh, they're showing me a lot of love and support. Houston, I have actually a lot more streams here in Houston because I've been doing more shows here. I've been getting out myself out more. Uh, I've been talking with DJs, making connections and things like that. So, I mean, if I can already start establishing a good little fan base or streams here and stuff like that, I'm going to try to take it out somewhere else, you know? Facts. So what's next for you? Short-term goals, EP, right? Mm-hmm. But long-term, work with more artists, start getting some features in. Maybe get myself out, out at bigger venues, maybe at Clay, uh, uh, maybe at Aura or wherever they do do shows here in Houston. But definitely, I want to get myself out of Texas okay. just because I wanna I wanna expand as, as quick as possible, but also keep it in a good way that I can manage what I'm doing. For sure. You should make a Spanish trap gospel album. That sounds lit, fam. That yep. sounds amazing. Carlos Castillo. I would say it again. Let's put that again, bro. I think I, I think Carlos you got some. Carlos Castillo. Carlos <laughs> Castillo. <laughs> I said I think you got some. Carlos hey, Castillo. you should call it. How you say last supper in Spanish? Uh, what? Last, last supper up. in Spanish. La última cena. See, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, that. With a cereal bowl. Uh, uh, <laughs> that would be lit, fam. That would be lit. <laughs> I, think the, I think that that's what the, the wave is, is with music, is to find something that a lane that nobody else is in. It's like in. something different. Yeah. yeah. That's the key, is give the people something they've never heard before. Something yeah. Because yeah. that's what Old Town Road was, was something we've never heard yeah. before. Yeah. Never heard. It was trap it's country. super catchy. Trap country. It was trap country. Until yeah. you realize he was talking about me. All right, so where can everybody <laughs> find you on social media? <laughs> uh, y'all can go uh, follow me on social media, on IG, uh, Twitter, or all social platforms uh, by JV Malo. It's J-A-Y-V-I-I, Malo, M-A-L-O. Uh, show some love or follow back. You know, one follow goes a long way. So if y'all love my music or y'all like the content out on YouTube and with my music video, I mean, if you haven't seen it, I mean, you're in for a surprise because I did something pretty outside the box. You so did, bro. Y'all can follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, everything, and I'll be active. And, you know, if you show some love, comment, and just hear my music and share it, man, because that's what I want to do. I want to do music for the rest of my life. For sure. All right, All right. Thank you so much for kicking it with us and stopping by. We're about to go ahead and get into a mix with DJ and Thrax. And when we come back, it's going to be Mo with Catch 22 Radio Show. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 Radio Show on Lenny 2 Kills.com. We out of here. We out of Hey, what's good? It's your boy, Jeffy Milo. I just did a dope interview with Catch 22 Radio. Look forward to my project, my new EP, Troublemaker, so you know what it is. Keep posted. Show much love. Yeah.